Hello, and Happy New Year! This is gonna be a bit of a different video compared to my others in the last year because it's gonna be more of a vlog overview type thing. And look, you can actually see me. I'm not just a little voiceover. Y'all like my microphone? I'm so professional. And I think it's gonna be a bit shorter, more summary style. I won't bore you once again by explaining how my entire life revolves around Wes Anderson and how- So I'll cut to the chase. The Vancouver International Film Festival held a series showing every single one of Wes Anderson's films. This was a big deal to me for obvious reasons reasons. It meant I could see all his movies I missed in their initial theatrical run due to not being alive or too young. I ended up seeing seven in the two weeks, all six I hadn't seen in theater, plus one I had that I just had to see again. I would have gone to all of them, however, if I did, I would have been broke by the end. So yeah, I guess I'll just get into it. The series kicked off with the screening of the Grand Budapest Hotel and a little pre-show party. There's a costume contest, so I arrived dressed as myself, but if you know me, you know my style's very much Wes Anderson costume contest. So I entered anyway. They had a cool poster gallery of all his movies, plus a slideshow of photos from said movies. We were given bingo sheets to fill in as we attended screenings. They played music from all his soundtracks, which was very exciting for me as that's just all the music I listen to on a regular basis. And then it was movie time, or so I thought. First they showed some of Wes's ads he directed, like Castello Cavalcanti, Come Together, and Prada Candy, as well as a personal video message from Wes himself, sending his best wishes and apologies for not being able to make it, as he, in true Wes fashion, was on a little train in Texas. And honestly, I'm glad he wasn't there, because I think if I ever saw him in person, I would just vomit everywhere. And then the movie started, and I was so excited to see the visual decadence that is Grand Budapest on that large scale. Seeing in this format was really cool because it's his only film of the last 13 years I didn't get to see in the theaters, and I think my opinion on the movie has become more positive since the screening. Night two, I had tickets to both Bottle Rocket and Rushmore. And I was really excited because if I'm being honest, out of every screening I was going to, I was most excited for Bottle Rocket. I started my night with Bottle Rocket in their studio theater, which to my surprise was very small. I think there was probably just over 30 seats, but I thought it was really cool. I do wish I could have seen it on the huge screen, but scheduling wise, this was the best option with Rushmore. And let me say, despite the slightly smaller screen, this movie just looks beautiful. I love it so much. Bottle Rocket has my favorite visuals of any West movie, so I was just really excited to see it in this format. After Bottle Rocket, I walked 20 feet to the main theater where Rushmore was starting. This one was also very exciting on the big screen, not just for my eyes, but for my ears. This was the first West movie filled to the brim with amazing needle drops and you know, hearing a quick one while he's away on massive theater speakers is a godly experience. Day three, I took my brother to Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I did see in its initial theater run, but it was very important to me to see it again at that size. Plus, it was the only screening that under 19s could go to besides Isle of Dogs, and I wanted my brother to experience this momentous occasion. But yeah, what can I say about this movie that hasn't been said? It's amazing, it's a masterpiece, and it was so lovely to see it in this setting again. Had a little break for Christmas times, but you couldn't keep me away that long because it was Darjeeling limited time. If you watched my Wes Anderson ranked, you already know. I took my mom and we had just the best time. They showed Hotel Chevalier first, which I'm so very glad they did. It just adds so much to an already perfect thing. And it looked so gorgeous at that size compared to watching it on my laptop via YouTube. Then the movie happened, I was tearing up the entire time. Words can't describe how much this movie means to me, and as dramatic as this sounds, this is an experience I'll probably cherish forever. For my New Year's, I went over to the Rio Theater for The Life Aquatic. Now why go to the Rio and skip the VIF screening? I'll tell you. First, this screening was announced prior to the VIF series, and I kind of already made plans with my family for this. And as I mentioned before, no minors were permitted to most of the VIF screenings, and this is my 14-year-old brother's favorite Wes Anderson movie. So yeah, not a very exciting story. <laughs> I probably like this movie just as much as I do Darjeeling Limited, so... I was just so excited for this as well. <laughs> this was definitely the most fun viewing experience. Nothing to do with the theater. It's just a really fun movie, and I wish it was in the theater every day. The following night, I made my way back to VIF for my final screening of the Wes Anderson series, 
the Royal Tenenbaums. This was the busiest screening yet. It was almost a full house, which I'm not surprised. This is his most iconic and I guess you'd say most accessible film. But yeah, it was great. I think this was a really perfect movie to end on. I hope they do more series like this in the future. I really fell in love with Vif these last two weeks and I'm very excited to go back soon. I can't believe how lucky I was to be able to attend this series. Thanks to the VIF Center, if you live in Vancouver, you should definitely consider a membership. It's a really great place. Thanks to the Rio as well, and thank you for watching.